Say hello to the monoblock from a company called Poseidon's Three Rings. This block of nickel plated copper is supposed to be able to transfer 45 watts of heat through the heat pipe alone. As beautiful as this thing looks, it's not without fault. Even to the point that I dare ask, is it worth it? Spoiler alert, no. There are better, cheaper options. However, if you love to tinker, the Steam Deck accessory may be right up your alley. Before we get into the video, I want to thank today's sponsor, KeysFan. It's okay if you haven't heard of them before, nor have I. However, after verifying that they were a legit company, I took in what they had to offer. The too long didn't read it at all it was that the keys fan is an excellent place to buy your Windows software. And when I say software, that means Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office tools. On top of that, they sell games keys, which don't appear to the main, main focus as the pricing isn't the greatest on those, as well as some Mac and other editing tool software. Now, getting into what they do currently have, uh, they have a flash sale going on. If you use code ACL50 or ACL62 at checkout, that'll get you that much percentage wides off on Windows licenses or uh, Windows software. Now, I understand people's skepticism, mine included, and at this point you're probably wondering why I've been showing pictures of dogs. That's where I get into my skepticism. Knowing a lot of these sites will use uh, stolen or max activation keys under the guise of real codes, I went ahead and purchased my own Windows 11 Pro key to check its validity. The tool I have here is PID Key Checker, and it's a Windows licensed tool that will tell you the, the validity of the key and what its purpose is for. Now, this way we can see if we have a verified consumer key. As such, we can see through the verification tool found on GitHub, it is indeed a genuine Windows 11 professional key code, which is fantastic news because I would have told them to kick rocks otherwise. Now, even still, these companies can be pretty shady at times in how they operate. I'm not saying Keys Fan is, but it's just the na nature of the beast and these type of places. Um, with that in mind, I have decided to take their payment with, for this ad spot and donate it to the local dog rescue agency I work with, uh, hence the dog photos. These are photos of dogs that my wife and I have fostered over the past year and a half or so. They've all been fantastic dogs and they've come from terrible starts in life. These dogs have been neglected and abused by other dogs and humans alike. These dogs come from Canada. They are hunted and culled in communities where they're deemed a threat or a nuisance. People's sentiment towards dogs in these areas are that they are disposable. Uh, the rescue I work with goes in and grabs as many dogs as they can, from puppies to pregnant moms. They take them all. My most recent foster was hit by a car when he was about four months old. Unfortunately, his leg was lost, but he was and still is thriving after surgery. The price of his vet bills alone, I believe, were north of $10,000. So thank you Keys fans for sponsoring this video uh, for their contribution to the dog rescue. Note that I donated these funds myself uh, from them, however the sentiment still stands, they didn't donate it directly. Uh, their compensation will go towards dog food, vet bills, uh, and any other dog related costs. If you're looking for a good website to get legit Windows software, they seem pretty legit in my opinion, and have been validated through software. Note. Um, I didn't use my credit card at checkout, I used PayPal and I always would suggest to use PayPal or something like that over credit card at all times when you're operating on sites like these. So thanks again Keyspans for sponsoring this video. After getting lucky ordering a Wave 1 monoblock that had been put up for sale after internal testing, I was pretty excited. Honestly, I hadn't looked too much into the actual modding process, however it is advertised as a drop-in replacement. What I did find though through their Discord was not advertised at all on their website other than in their wave 2 ordering redesign uh, what i found was that the material was not thick enough over the apu to make good contact with it as such people had resorted to using copper shims to make contact pressure with the apu after learning that i went online to find some however proper shims at 0.1 millimeters are stupid expensive here uh, however on aliexpress they are cheaper so i ended up ordering some on there however i didn't feel like waiting because it was quite a bit long for shipping uh so turn to the copper film it measures in at 0.1 millimeter thick uh, because the thickness is the same i can very well see this being as effective when properly applied um, when i got into tearing apart my steam deck something i'm intimately aware of now as you may know from my broken screen video um, it was super simple to get to where i needed to all you have to do is unplug the battery remove the heat shield then remove the heat pipe and then drop in the replacement while keeping the tape in place. Now, knowing that the pressure was important to get right, as with any cooler, what I did was place a piece of copper film on top of the APU and put four dots of their included Thermalite TFX paste. Then I mounted the cooler and carefully unmounted it to check for pressure. 
Even at only 0.1 millimeter, uh, pressure seemed to be okay, and the paste did get a good spread. However, in my application, I put two pieces of film in a thermal paste, then film pattern. Uh, once again, I, once everything was installed, I noticed my temperatures were awful in Unigen. Uh, that's the Unigen Heaven benchmark, and it focuses on the GPU, with it hitting at 80 degrees in the benchmark, something the Steam Deck had never gotten to, even with the JSOX backplate and everything. Uh, with or without the fan. My deck even shut down from overheating. So I took apart the deck and then made sure I placed all the pads properly, uh, each varying in one millimeter to two millimeter thick. Then I placed the 0.4 millimeter worth of copper film on the APU, again, alternating between paste and film. And then this was my last go because I ran out of Thermalite paste and I didn't want to waste any more Corsair XTM70 paste because it's pretty expensive. So luckily temperatures did seem to be more stable in my second application. Now getting into temperatures, I used three tests. First was the Unigen Heaven, and this was an OpenGL based benchmark that works on Linux. This heavily stresses the GPUs without modern features. Uh, we can see that our stock temperatures were hitting mid to high 70s, alongside the monoblock stock hitting around the same temperatures, if not a little bit higher. However, when we introduced the JSOX backplate, not including the fan, we are left with nearly the same results. Because this program is only really stressing the GPU and not the CPU, we're just not putting out as much heat as we will be with the playing Cyberpunk or something like that. Now, when I undervolted my Steam Deck with the backplate, we were able to drop temperatures to the low to mid 70s, as well as this would potentially save you some battery life, although minimal. Now, moving up to 18 watts with just the backplate, we were hitting high to mid 70s, uh, high 70s to 80s, sorry. This was the highest I was ever able to go with just my stock Steam Deck, no mods or anything. And then introducing the fan is where things get interesting. Looking at the bottom left of the stock, um, the, is stock speeds with the fan, we had dropped to the temperatures into the low 70s which in turn reduces the Steam Deck fan noise and RPM, which I would say that the JSOX fan operates quieter than the Steam Deck, but then you've got a fan on the back of your Steam Deck. So kicking up to, to 22 watts, we can see that we are now creeping up closer to the mid 70s, but still remaining quite cool. Now maxing things out to the 30 watt limit with just the monoblock, we're reaching mid to high 80s, and then bringing the fan without the monoblock, we're hitting mid 70s, then add in the monoblock and fan combo, we're reaching mid to high 70s. Now, as we can see, based on the benchmarks, these things are not looking so good for the model block. Getting into Cyberpunk, we can see that Steam Deck uh, stock and my model block stock do tend to operate around the same temperatures, with the model block potentially reaching higher temperatures. Um, introducing the fan and backplate to produce the most amount of heat and heat removal. Temperatures were hovering around the high 80s with just the monoblock, low 80s with the monoblock and fan, and then at the mid 80s with just the backplate, sorry, and fan. Now, after going through these uh, benchmarks, we can see that we were still able to dissipate enough heat for maximum overclocking for the Steam Deck. The monoblock is starting to make a little bit more sense in these situations, being a docked overclock type experience. Now, moving over to Blender Classroom Render, I tested this for a long-term heat soak, at stock, we got up to 83 degrees or so, uh, with the fans going over 5,000 RPM. Now, with stock monoblock, we were able to drop the temperature and fan noise by some margin, pushing further with the fan at stock. Overclocking to allow a max of 30 watts to be put through, we can see that we hit the low 80s with the fan and high 80s with just the monoblock, and about 80 degrees with the monoblock and the fan combo. As such, if you've been watching closely, the fan speeds as well as temperatures, you can see that obviously heat is directly tied to fan speed. If we're able to keep the APU cooler more passively than with the active cooler or fan, then it won't need to kick in as high. Um, this is shown through the use of the monoblock and the JSOX backplate and cooler combo. In game, however, playing Cyberpunk, I saw no noticeable difference in fan speed at stock. Uh, and overclocked or anything nor did i see any difference at 30 watt and at this point introducing a, an external heat sink to your steam deck i'm sure noise is the least of your concerns however i can say that in cyberpunk we did see an average of fps of 33 from our stock steam deck go to about 38 to 39 fps average which is a pretty sizable increase 
talking more in depth about performance, you obviously will get better performance as you increase the, the watts and clock speeds. Uh, this is exaggerated in testing of Unigen and Blender, and at full overclock we took about 30 seconds off of our render time on Blender. This may sound like nothing, but it is quite a sizable gain in performance. However, this doesn't appear to be the only way to achieve these results. As shown, the JSOX backplate and fan did a pretty good job at keeping up with the monoblock, which for an option that costs about $20 with another $30 on a backplate versus the $99 they ask, plus taxes and duties, adding in the mod time and potentially having to custom fit your APU, the price to performance to hassle ratio is all out of whack. The simplicity of just adding a new backplate and additional fan is a fantastic experience. However, if you are able to get good mount pressure, uh, someone had posted that their Diablo temps went from mid 80s to mid 70s. On their site, they have listed temperatures going 20 degrees lower in God of War, but you have to get a proper fitment and it's, I, I don't know, even when you do, it's just not that good apparently. The performance gain, even if properly fitted, just doesn't seem to be there. If you absolutely hate the Steam Deck fan, this can reduce your Steam Deck fan noise. Just know that you very much will have to tinker your way through this. As an end result, you may see lower temperatures, and if that's the case, you will see better performance as the APU is allowed to boost its clocks higher for longer. When completely cool with the cooler and backplate, it kept the fan level low as well as the GPU near maxed out 1.6 GHz nearly all the time in Unigen benchmark. If overclocking, you will be able to get more mileage out of your device, thermally speaking. However, the same can be said about using the JSOX backplate with the fan attachment. Again, there are other cheaper, almost as good options. In conclusion, should you buy the monoblock for the Steam Deck? Well, no. Which is good, because this revision isn't even for sale anymore. The amount of tinkering needed to be done, as well as the amount of just rights that need to fall into place, is too great. Especially to recommend for someone who's expecting it to be a screw-in, drop-in method. I'm hoping so much that the second revision fixes more or all of these issues, mainly with the contact pressure not being even or great enough. During my tinkering, I had to use multiple layers of copper film to get good contact with the APU. Even then, it didn't produce jaw-dropping results like I expected. As a result, I used slightly longer screws as I felt they weren't getting a good enough torque on them with the stock screws with the monoblock. Now, in the process, the cheap screw I got from Extreme Rate case uh, that I when I did the shell swap, it just stripped instantly. So, no amount of tricks or methods have worked, and I now have a pitted, stripped out screw holding on the monoblock. The other two screws, though, I did pick, uh, they seem to be going okay, and it did give a little bit more pressure on the APU. Now, on top of having a broken screen, I have a screw that is essentially fused to my cooler and mainboard, which is fine if I never wanted to remove this block again. However, I do have the second revision of the monoblock on pre-order, so not being able to remove the one, uh, version one, proves to be a bit of a challenge. On top of all that, I have the copper shims, as well as PTM 7950 thermal sheets. I was going to test that along with the shims, and that should have produced better results, I feel. However, now having a destroyed Steam Deck in more ways than one, I feel as though I will never be able to test that on this Steam Deck. Now, I have more motivation to get a second Steam Deck to become a big-time YouTuber. Um, however, I can't see myself buying something I already have a working one of. It would be nice to have a mod Steam Deck and a non-mod Steam Deck for comparisons. However, until I can find a way to get this damn screw out without completely killing my Steam Deck, I'll just have to live with my Franken Deck. Unfortunately, I just made two bigger purchases, so a complete Steam Deck replacement is out of the question at this point. I still have the funds set aside for the Deck HD screen ready to go. Uh, the question at this point, uh, when it comes out, who knows, but I'll just be more than happy with a working screen that will come with its own set of issues. Now, if you happen to know of a surefire way to get a completely stripped screw out, or if you like seeing me destroy my Steam Deck, let me know how much of an idiot I am in the comments. 
If you have anything else to recommend for future testing, let me know. And as always, I hope you all have a great day.